one of the strong points instantly besides the fact that you had two different impedance in the load of an 8 and a 16 ohm impedance um, that it didn't change the sound of the guitar amp so you could really crank a 100 watt Marshall through it and then attenuate it super low and and you know record it at a decent volume but still getting that gain of that amplifier without totally destroying the sound of the guitar amp I mean obviously the lower you turn it the more you have to turn the, the, the mic pre up and that does change the sound a bit too but the sound of the amplifier itself wasn't choked or strangled in any way. Graphic EQ is so much simpler to use than a parametric EQ because parametric you kind of have to sweep stuff and the graphics already fixed it's ready to roll you've got X amount of sliders whether it's a 6 band a 10 band or whatever it is and you can dial in sounds instantly and the fact that you can plug into this thing and kick in the graphic and just kind of, okay, it's a little bit fizzy, let me take the fizzy out. Or if it's a little bit dark, let me add some of the fizzy back in and the brightness. So it's just a cool, easy to dial in guitar sound, direct, a whole rediscovering the sound of 70s guitars and how they recorded a lot of stuff direct and, and being able to take this and, and play with a, a full band in a room and have this as part of the guitar signal where it's not bleeding into everything else and just making some crazy ass solo sounds and guitar sounds using the Rock Crusher as the sole amplifier cabinet is uh, it's just super flexible with its EQ on it so I think, I think it sounds really great. I was able to dial in a guitar sound instantly um, with, with the Rock Crusher. It's just, like I said, it's, you don't really, once your amp is set up, how you sort of like it normally, and then you engage this, um, it's 11 band EQ on here with the really crucial frequency points related to speakers. Um, you know, there's not some super, super 12K or 16K frequency on there because the speaker's not reproducing that anyway. And there's, as far as the bottom goes, it does, there are things that you probably never hear down in the 20 and 30 hertz, so why bother putting them on an EQ? So it's just all in the important mid-range area where the, where the EQ is focused. And if you can't get a good guitar sound with a, with a graphic EQ, it's just, it's crazy. You plug your amp in how you normally like it, you kick the EQ in, you could tweak instantly, a little more top, a little more bottom, a little more mid, a little less mid. Without even having to go to your amp, you can have an infinite range of sounds and you could also if you use it in addition to a, a mic'd cabinet you could also tweak it with this EQ so it fits the best without having to deal with phase issues and things like that. Usually you plug into a speaker emulator and you're kind of stuck with the sound that it gives you. Um, they might have minimal amounts of EQ on it but there's not a lot and you really have to go in and kind of tweak your amp a lot more into some crazy area where you might never never have gone before to make it sound good through a normal speaker emulator. So I tend to use speaker emulators for reamping stuff when I'm mixing where I'm not looking for maybe the most pristine bass sound or the most pristine guitar sound or something that's way more affected. But in the case of the Rock Crusher and having the, the you know, 11 bands of EQ at your fingertips, I'm able to just tweak it out into a very usable rhythm guitar sound instantly without having to mess with my amp and make it do some weird stuff. I, I just love the ease of use of it and the, the flexibility and the frequencies and the EQ are really effective and, and focused on the areas where I think you need them in, in, in recording guitars. So. I, I never use digital cabinet emulation. I've tried it, you know, and a lot of times I think these things are designed for stuff other than guitar you know sometimes I'll use or I'll try I never really end up using it but you know I try to be open-minded and I'll try to put in a, a, a cabinet uh, emulator and the only time I really find it useful is, is on stuff like B3 and things like that that you don't really have an option you have a B3 plug-in you don't really own a B3 and you go into the speaker cabinet section you can tweak where the mics go what's on the microphone how much space or distortion or reverb or but in general, um, I have not found a way to record a guitar head into a cabinet emulator that's software-based.